So listen up. The next segment is strictly for the grown and sexy. Yes, viewer discretion is advised. Send your young children out of the room because we're going to talk about sex. If the Food and Drug Administration likes what it hears about a new drug up for approval later this year, women may soon find themselves having to clarify what they mean when they request a prescription for the pill. The arrival of America's very first female desire drug was the subject of Sunday's New York Times Magazine cover story. The article was adapted from writer Daniel Berggren's forthcoming book, What Do Women Want? Adventures in the Science of Female Desire. For the 30% of American women who Bergner says experience emotional distress because of a loss of lust, these new drugs could, for the first time, give them the keys to their own sex drive. And it would be a milestone in the medicalization of women's sexual desire, which, perhaps unsurprisingly, has historically been figuratively and literally in the hands of men. It's no coincidence that the word hysteria, which we understand today to mean a state of uncontrollable emotion, is derived from hystera, the Greek word for uterus. As early as the 4th century AD, female hysteria was a mental illness. Greek philosopher Plato pronounced a sexually frustrated uterus that wandered throughout the body as nothing less than a threat to women's very sanity. Hysteria would become the common catch-all diagnosis given to women who complained of all manner of symptoms consistent with otherwise normal female sexuality. Everything from a lack of desire to too much time spent fantasizing about sex to too much vaginal lubrication. That was all your hysteria just acting up. Luckily for the women of yore suffering with these afflictions, their physicians had just the thing. The cure for a bad case of hysteria was, wait for it, a good orgasm. A treatment that, if unable to be properly administered by a woman's husband, was readily available in the doctor's office. The orgasm cure, delivered by manual or battery-powered pelvic massage, was commonly provided to women for a fee by their doctors. If this all sounds a bit medieval, consider this. The hysteria diagnosis didn't fall out of fashion in the U.S. until the 1950s. Of course, the history of pathologizing women's sexual desire hasn't always been as benign as take two orgasms and call me in the morning. As late as the 20th century, in the United States, it was accepted medical practice to deny women's sexual agency by attempting to remove it altogether. Masturbation was considered to be dangerous for women because it was believed to trigger what could cause hysteria. For decades, from the late 19th to the mid-20th century, clitoral circumcision was used in this country as a treatment to prevent women from losing their minds by stopping them from pleasuring their bodies. And while the practice is a brutal historical artifact for American women, it remains a reality for girls and women in 28 countries around the world. In comparison, the possibilities of popping a pill to get things popping is a relatively small victory for women's sexual empowerment. But much like the culture shift that caused that other pill in the 1960s, even that small step for women could be a giant leap for womankind. So what's the holdup? That is next.